Hey, it's John, and this week we go wheel the Pardo Trail, we run Mud Lake, we go to Caples Lake and Camp, we go to Markleyville Grover Hot Springs, and then we come back and drive through the Calder Fire Burn Scar on North South Road. Stay tuned and go wheel. Heading up 88, we go check out a campground that actually wasn't open right here that we wanted to camp at. So we ended up heading to Bear River Reservoir right here. And here we are driving over the dam. We camped near the trailhead the night before with my brother and my niece. Doing a, a red sauce pasta with this community grains pipe regate or regate, I don't know how you say it. A Trader Joe's red sauce, Parmesan, a garlic, squash, so we're cooking the garlic bread on his intake manifold. There's the fire pit. No fires allowed, but I did call the forest service yesterday. We could definitely have propane fires. Got two bottles. I'm always super stoked to get out of the house and go camping and go wheeling, even if it's not the best camp spot, even if it's not the hardest trail. Having some spam and egg and American cheese sliders on Hawaiian rolls for breakfast this morning. Super good. Then next we drove up to like a lookout. Josh showed up for the day, tried to find us last night, but we didn't camp where I sent him coordinates because it was behind a lock gate. Uh, Dan's Cherokee, he overheated yesterday. We had to fix that. Figured out it was a fan relay. Wasn't coming on with his AC on, just his Bronco. He brought his electric bike. My niece Ellie came. We got Chris right there, just checking out this view. Next, we went to another lookout and a cave. And it's solid rock, it's not falling down on anybody. Oh, God damn it, now that you said that, let me get out of here. <laughs> it's like in the scary movie right before the rock falls. Everything looks solid, we're good to go. Well, if they were blasting in here and it didn't come down, yeah. It's pretty cool. From there, we departed ways with my brother and Josh and headed to the Pardo Trailhead and tear down. We're at the Pardo Trailhead. We got Dan and Bill. It's supposed to be a super easy trail. I just got done airing down. Dan disconnected his sway bars. Dan, are you going to air down next or no? Okay. I only aired down to 19. It's an easy trail, but 37 PSI is beating me up on these dirt roads with an E-range tire and some stiff suspension. So um, we're at 8 and 03. Basically take Bear Reserve. Bear bear river reservoir road off of 88 to, to 8n03 and drive around the reservoir so dan's rig yesterday was overheating um he was running his ac the electric fan wasn't kicking on we checked his fan relay and it actually like fell apart in our hands and, and had a bunch of corrosion inside and when he was like squeezing it together without the cap off it started to trigger the fan so we knew we had power here we knew things should work we ended up going into his kick panel and I kind of remember there's a couple relays in the kick panel that are like for the horn and stuff. We pulled one of those, put it in. He's just kind of running around with his heater on today. Um, he hasn't overheated. You haven't overheated since yesterday, right? About we got a factory eight and a quarter in the rear with the limited slip and a Dana 30, the lunchbox and 33s, some stock gears, 355s. He's got some Rubicon Express long arms. We made those rock sliders. He's got some cool tailgate armor, tire carrier, roof rack. Oh, it does have the mid stiffeners. The power steering box. He's got the mid stiffeners. He's got the cross brace for the power steering. Oh, that's right, we put that on there, huh? That's one of those things I think, I was like, you gotta get that. The ARB winch bumper. We put those shocks on too, longer brake lines for, what, four inch, four inch lift brake lines for a YJ that we got on like Rock Auto for 10 bucks each. And then the rear, I think, is a 96 Dakota rear brake line. So we're still on 8N03. This looks more like an official trailhead to me. Just made a quick lunch. How long this has been here? So we are at where the trail splits. I actually don't know if one section's harder or easier. The trail splits down. It looks like it goes down to the left, which means it probably has to come back up, maybe, or maybe it drops, I don't know. And this looks, this goes up, that goes down.
No, the turns alone with a more diesel dual cab. Not gonna lie, I thought Highway 88 was way closer. We just got out of the Mud Lake Road. It was about an hour out. We stopped a ton looking for campsites. We're gonna go try to find a campsite somewhere right now. It's getting dark and uh, we're exhausted and we're starving. Pardo has one good spot of wheeling, really, and then the rest of it's kind of just annoying, uh, really annoying, like two wheel drive stuff. Got out of Pardo super late last night, and, and we're camping at we're camping at Cables Lake at a pay campsite. It got dark really fast. Gassed up at Kirkwood gas station, at Kirkwood Inn, and then drove basically drove up and down 88 looking for a spot because we were exhausted and uh, we didn't want to wheel back into the trail. We never found any good camp spots on Pardo anywhere worth camping at, other than maybe one lookout spot on the way out that we should have camped at. There was like an overlook of I think Silver Lake. Um, we probably should have camped there, but we ended up driving around. It's fine. We're going to head to Grover Hot Springs today. Just got some ice in Markleyville, and now we're going to go to Grover, praying to God that they have some spots available, because they made it sound like on the phone, like they they sell out of tickets possibly in the, in the early in their day. So I'm hoping it's a, it's a slow Friday and we can still get a spot. Um, and then I think we're going to go eat some lunch at the uh, Cutthroat restaurant in Markleyville. Definitely a different kind of trip for us because we normally don't get to do some of the creature comforts like eating, eating out or staying at a, a pay site or, uh, or going to a hot spring to get to pay for, but I think it should be a lot of fun. I need a nap right now. I think we're gonna head back up 88 and what we're gonna go check out Mormon Immigrant Trail, North South Road, Pipe Eye Valley, 
maybe Plumber Ridge four wheel drive trail. All right, we're heading home. We went to North South Road yesterday. First off, it, I really hadn't registered the destruction of Calder Fire until we drove down Mormon Immigrant and we saw like 20 miles of burned of burned forest. And we were looking for North South Road because I remembered, oh yeah, North South Road's like super cool. You, you know, we used to do some uh, target shooting in National Forest up there. So yeah, there was a large sign on the Mormon Immigrant Trail you know, North South Road. I think we went almost 20 miles on North South Road before we saw a green tree, green forest again. 20 miles minimum. And that's like, that was only a small part of the Calder Fire because it, it ran over to uh, South Lake Tahoe. We had friends in the immediate area that were evacuated. I've never driven through a burn scar before of a, uh, of a fire. I've seen the, we've seen the effects of the Tamarack Fire on Highway 4 and 88 in Markleyville, but I've never driven for 20 miles and you'd see these giant piles of, of uh, trees that were cut down that were, you know, every pile had 50 to 100 trees in it and there was more than I could count. So that was crazy. Uh, yesterday we we drove all the way to Pai Pai Valley Campground just to check it out. Not my cup of tea, I don't like paid campsites. Because of the, uh, the burn scar on North South Road, a lot of the camping I was considering was was like not an option anymore. We were trying to find a cool dispersed camp spot. We followed a bunch of stuff on, on Onyx and we were just taking roads until almost eight o'clock last night. And we were exhausted. By that point, we really didn't want to set up camp again late just to tear down again in the morning and go home anyways. So we ended up going back to my buddy Dan's house and we crashed there last night. Um, and then now I'm just heading home right now, driving down towards uh, Jackson on 88 to make my way home. The Pardo Trail was very interesting to me because it was it was like seven miles of two-wheel drive dirt road type of wheeling, like no real wheeling. But there were there were three obstacles that we had to put in low range for uh, before we hit the rock garden in the middle. And I would say at like the maybe the midpoint of the trail, there's a pretty legit rock garden. It's not. It's not worth the seven mile, eight mile drive in to get to it because it took us a long time to get there. We were stopping for lunch. We were checking out some awesome views. Pardo does have a lot of awesome views. The trail after the rock garden is once again really easy until we hit the uh, Mud Lake turn. And we went out Mud Lake, we were tired. So it took us about six hours to go from the trailhead all the way to 88. We did stop a lot. We stopped and had lunch. We checked out the views. I think the Mud Lake route took us an hour and may climb up to eight, 9,000 feet on Pardo. If you can, like, subscribe, click notifications, comment below. I'm trying to grow the channel to like a thousand subscribers. It'll be fun. Never been down this road, I don't know how far she goes But I've been lost before, and all these signs, they don't leave